Hello everyone, welcome back to Rust Rocket Nation. I know it's been a long time since I've uploaded, but once again, I'm still junior. Uh, today, I actually might get the Mustang running again. It's been down for a little bit. I put new O2 sensors on it. It ran great for like a day. According to the butt dyno, had a little bit more power. It was running a little smoother. Uh, literally drove it over to a friend's house hung out for a little while drove it home and it wouldn't start uh checked the pressure of the fuel rail it was getting a very tiny bit like i'd press the vent and uh just a little dribble would come out so swap the fuel filter now it's getting pressure to the fuel rail uh it's getting spark uh at the at the coil to the distributor cap and I have a new distributor cap and a new rotor bug so still won't start won't fire off of starting fluid nothing like it'll crank and crank and crank uh, described a couple of things it was doing to a mechanic buddy of mine shout out to Joe uh, <clears throat> and he said try my uh, ignition so we have a lock cylinder because I know I needed one anyway I'll show you why when we get out there and I have the actual ignition module I'm going to start with just a lock cylinder and if that fixes it the ignition module is going back because I'm lazy and I don't feel like taking the bottom part of my dash apart but realistically I'm probably going to be swapping both of them uh, we're even going to try to uh, cheese the ignition uh, lock cylinder because there are three screws holding the bottom of the steering column in and a hole that you should be able to push the pin out that holds the ignition lock cylinder in and I just so happen to have this set of precision screwdrivers that I bet go in that hole quite nicely <laughs> uh, so it should be so simple as literally turn the key to the run position push the pin up, slide the old ignition cylinder out, lock cylinder out, slide the new lock cylinder in, the pin should auto latch when I turn the key back and it should be good. Then we'll try to crank it, try to start it, see what happens, probably nothing. And if that's the case, then I'll have to pull the bottom part of the dash part to get to the actual ignition module. Uh, I'm not sure the actual part number or part name and I just ordered it ignition sensor I don't know whatever you know what it is you, you the thing that makes the car go vroom vroom when you turn the key but uh it is just a couple bolts shouldn't take too long but I know how my life works so I've earmarked at least a couple hours for a job that should take 15 20 minutes uh but we'll get out there get started and we'll see all right, so step one is to disconnect the negative battery cable so I don't shock myself as hilarious as that would be. And usually I wouldn't even bother showing you guys this, but the fact that these are literally like two month old brass terminals and look at how fucking corroded they are, makes me wonder what the hell's going on with this battery in particular that it is causing it to just generate all the corrosion. But anyway, all we have to do out here is disconnect the negative battery terminal and then the rest of it's inside the car. So let's see. All right, so what we're going to attempt to do here is uh, see these holes. Uh, I believe this one and this one and then this one over here are screw holes. And this one is the hole for your through pin that holds the uh ignition lock cylinder you can tell i need a new one because yeah that's not some it's supposed to be something like that and instead it just spins but uh if you look closely if you can see it on the camera this hole appears to be smaller diameter than these holes so that leads me to believe i believe that this one is the one that holds the ignition lock cylinder and if not and we do, or if this doesn't work, and we do have to uh, take the bottom panel off. Someone has graciously already removed the plastic for me. So all I should have to do is take out, oh, 
Oh, the bolts are taking out, taken out too. So that's being held up with literally just that zip tie. So I will cut that zip tie, drop this metal plate down, and somewhere in here is my uh, ah right right there. Uh, no, not there. There with the Torx bits is my actual ignition control module. Uh, so let's get started on that. But the first thing I have to do is stop being dumb because I have to go inside and grab the key because I left it inside on the table. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to do this uh, either one-handed or with the camera laying in a way that hopefully everybody can see it. But step one for me is apparently drop the key. Uh, step two is swap to my dominant hand, stupid. Uh, I have to actually line the... Ooh. the actual hole for the key because somewhere there it is is where the key is supposed to go hey keys in all right turn out to run all right now let us see with these little precision screwdrivers if I can poke that pin and get it to come out. So let's use the biggest Phillips I have, which I think is a P0. And not long enough. On the plus side, that hole is much larger than a regular precision screwdriver. I may be able to do this with a regular screwdriver. All right, give me a minute and I will be back. So after searching for through a few screwdrivers, now comes the uh, earmarking myself extra time part because I realized that I did not have a screwdriver that is both long enough to either reach the pin or reach the screws uh, to remove, uh, but also narrow enough to go into the holes for the screws. So I'm probably going to have to call in some backup. I got one more place I can check for just errant screwdrivers, but I'm probably going to have to call Willie just to bring me a screwdriver. All right, I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, so uh, I ended up getting it out. I was lucky enough to have not a Phillips to remove the screws, but a tiny Torx bit to hook up in the tiny hole and get the old lock cylinder out uh it looks i mean here let me get in the light here it's like a little corroded but it's not terrible but you saw it spinning when it's not supposed to so clearly something wrong there so now we reach over ignore all my car parts and trash on the floorboard this car has been sitting for like i said a while now we get our new lock cylinder which comes with one a new set of keys which is great because uh my key as you can see the plastic broke and it didn't go to the doors anyway and two lock cylinder is shipped ready for installation into steering column do not rotate the key clockwise until lock cylinder is installed into steering column it is supposed to be lined up in the run position how the old one came out so all I should have to do is let's compare the two here like this all I should have to do is line this tab up which yeah that that doesn't look right but we're gonna try it we're gonna line it up and see what happens. So we got a tab right here, the pen hole right down there, and the pen is already pushed down, which tells me that that should not be the case because the pen isn't supposed to turn down until your ignition turns down. 
I think. Or maybe you're just supposed to actually have it, the plastic removed. But that, no, that pen is definitely locked and not pushing it. So, sorry about the shoddy camera work. I am my own cameraman. Pin pushes freely. All right, pin push freely. So, I read a couple guides online. And basically, I just need to be able to get this pin in there. The pin moves freely. The key is in the, now it's in the run position, sort position, something. I'm sure I'm fucking this up horribly. Uh, so, you know, got that going for me. Ooh, the inside of that looks like a lock cylinder. Okay. Oh, oh, the lock cylinder just came off. That could explain why they said don't, don't turn it. Cause I'm an idiot. All right. <laughs> well, we are going to attempt to put that back on in the proper orientation. And, uh, we may be making a trip back to the parts store. Uh, give me a minute. Okay, so I ended up getting it back together and getting it in. Uh, I had to do that off camera because I needed both hands, but you can see it turn to crank. We'll turn back to shut off. I pushed the clutch release or the key release rather it will come back and then there is accessory mode so it works uh i ended up having to do it differently than the manuals online all said they said well not manuals online the thing literally said oh it ships ready to go but it it was not i had to line up the tabs on here let me show you on my old one all right uh as soon as I remember where I sat, right here. Okay, so I had to line up this tab to where it was facing up and the pin was facing down, which is how this one is when I pulled it out. It was not how that one was when it was shipped. That's why it wasn't going in because when this is pointed up, this pin will push flush and slide in. And then when you turn it, the pin pops out and locks the key in place, the lock cylinder in place. But either way, got a new one in. Let's go ahead and throw the negative battery terminal back on. See if it cranks, see if that was it. And it was literally just the $16 part. Or see if I need to dig deeper into this. And by that, I mean cut one zip tie and uh, replace the approximately $30 part. Well, All right, battery's dead. It's been sitting too long and I've been trying to crank it off and on every now and then uh, so I'm gonna swap it for the one in the Ranger uh, and then just give it a few cranks so I don't you know kill my only running vehicles battery but first we get this battery cleaner and acid detector apparently turns pink on contact with acid wanted to see just you know out of curiosity nope well said spray a generous amount that seems like pretty generous and there's a little bit of pink but mostly that's just straight up corrosion uh cool i don't know why that's corroding but we're gonna let that sit it said like two to four minutes and then flush with water like a gallon jug of water and then we're gonna swap the ranger battery in it real quick try to crank it see if it works if it does work then hell yes if it doesn't we move on to the next step all right once again back with you guys in a minute well that did nothing it cranked and didn't try to start until i let off the key same thing it was doing last time but i did figure out they actually did leave the nuts slash screws in here so uh, i was wrong about the zip tie i apologize to uh whoever took the plastic cover off but i should be using my ratchet for this but i left it outside sitting on the ground near the battery so instead i'm using a screwdriver 
Also, these are either uh, eight millimeter bolts or 10 millimeter bolts, depending on which YouTube tutorial you're watching. Uh, I don't really know a good way to get a good camera angle. So uh, I'm gonna do that and hope that you guys can see anything. There's a bolt, it's all going to see. I have to uh, maneuver around the rigged up temp gauge. That's a good place for it and it doesn't work anyway. Alright, metal plate is down. There's another bolt for the washer. Now, I do need my wrench. Uh, what appears to be an eight there and then eight there to get this cross brace out so I can actually get to the module back there so I'll be back in a second with an eight go you know I'll be damned it actually is an eight like the guy on YouTube said but looking at these bolts compared to those bolts I think those are tens so I think the actual metal shroud is held in place by tens and then the metal crossbar here is held in place by eights that are apparently nine and a half miles longer than they need to be and they are literally not going to get finger tight the entire way until three quarters of the bolt is out so that will go on this side by my screwdriver and we will attempt to pull our other one out um, or honestly if I loosen it a bit can I just yeah we'll just move that out of the way all right now this uh, part here sorry I have to go upside down for this uh, should have all right, torque's there, torque's there, and this plug, oh, got it going upside down. Yep, should have one bolt, let me see if I can, yep, a bolt holding the plug in. So, I'm gonna grab my Torx bits, which luckily are actually still in here. Um, amidst more trash and my drill bits I couldn't find earlier, so that's cool. And, all right, lovely Harbor Freight, uh, T25, is that what they are, or the T30, I don't remember what they were, we're gonna try the T30, because it looks about right, let's just, just check it. It is, in fact, oh, a T30. So I'm gonna lay you guys on the floorboard, uh, possibly crawl in with you, and then uh, we're gonna get those two torque screws out. Then we're going to get that plug off, get the new part in, and See if it starts or if I just wasted all my time. Oh god. You right there. Like I said, I may literally have to crawl in the floorboard with you. I, I apologize to anyone that that makes uncomfortable. But let these be small because. Yes. Cool. Just break them loose and they're immediately finger tight. That's perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. They're not small, but break them loose and they're finger tight. All right. Luckily, I had tilt steering so I could get my steering wheel all the way up to get in here because it looks like there's not a lot of room 
especially not when you don't properly remove the cross brace. That one seems like I'm gonna need extension. So once again, give me a few seconds. Go. Okay, so yeah, that one literally just with an extension and the socket, I don't even need the ratchet. There it is. Don't mind me just dropping stuff. It didn't hit the camera, so it's fine. Legally speaking. But more stuff in the seat. And there is our likely culprit. Uh, I've been told, make sure that this is in the same, I'm oh, sorry, make sure that this pen is in the same position because that's the position your key is in, which right now my key is in the off position. But for now, uh, <laughs> well, let's take a trip around to the front of the car because I'm willing to bet Oops, ignore that, because I know me. Yeah, I didn't um, <clears throat> didn't disconnect the negative battery cable. So, now, one more pop. Bing, there we are. Let's get our new part Oy, over here. Pull it out of the lovely glass box. Make sure that our part visually matches. It does. The position appears to be the same. So, now let's uh, swap our ratchet back to our eight. Hope that uh, old boy on YouTube is telling the truth. And it is in fact an eight. Wish I had somewhere to mount this camera because this is going to require two hands. So, let's... um. I'm not even looking, Jesus. The camera has an auto shut off on the display. It's not an eight, maybe a seven. He may have said seven. Uh, is the screen upside down right now? Cause it's upside down for me. Uh, huh. Interesting. Yes, it was a seven. I was wrong. Guy on tutorial was right. There's our old part versus our new part. Uh, I'm just visually checking that the pins appear to be in the same location because you never know and Yeah, everything appears to be exactly the same the rod appears to be in the same position So now I'm just going to plug it in bolt it back up Bolt that crossbar back up out of the way and then honestly try cranking it again And if it works, then I'll put the metal cover back on but for now. I just want to hear it start I just want to hear it start again Alright, give me a second guys. Go. Okay, I lied. I'm putting the metal cover back on just because I'm done. Uh, it, those bolts are a 10. They are just um, notoriously like short. Like they're falling halfway in like the GoPro is falling. They are falling uh, halfway in the racket so i started them with a screwdriver it took forever I, like i've been fighting this longer than it took me to reinstall the module but anyway uh yeah re reinstallation is exactly the same as uninstalling it just line up your well first of all put in your eight millimeter and uh seven millimeter First of all, put in your seven millimeter plug bolt. Uh, it, for me, was a bit difficult to get started, like everything, but once I got it started, it worked just fine. Tightened it down, I just snugged it up. I didn't over tighten it. Uh, same thing with putting the actual ignition module on. I just snugged it up on account of it being made of plastic and me not wanting to break it. Uh, never realized quite how hard it is to do things one-handed while holding a camera with your other hand. Uh, I should have definitely drafted my nephew uh, to be my cameraman, but I did not because I am an idiot. Would you believe it? Um, is this even tightening it? Okay, let's see. No, no it's not. Okay, so yeah, that is definitely a 10, which is what it was supposed to be. And 
it was definitely not tightening it anymore. So, screwdriver it is. Flathead works. I don't know if you can see that because the screen shut off again, but it is most certainly, most, most certainly, I can speak English, turning. All right, so now we should just tighten this screw with a negative battery cable back on. And you guys will get to hear me try to fire it up for the first time since I changed the ignition module. And I hope to God it works. And I didn't just waste mine and everyone's time. Alright. So, let's literally, like I'm not even going to bother tightening it down, blah blah blah. I'm just going to put it on, make sure it makes a connection, crank it a bit, see if she fires up as I hit my truck again. All right, clutch in, neutral, come on baby. Come on, so close. Nope, that's exactly what it was doing before. It would... Fucking give me the key back. It would crank and crank and crank and nothing would happen until I actually let off the key. And then you may have heard on the battery, or on the camera, a little backfiring. Hopefully you did, because hopefully it'll help someone identify my damn problem. Uh, so... So it's now the next day and uh, a lot of diagnosing and a lot of fiddling around later, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It works. I uh, didn't want to end the episode on that low note of the last time. Uh, sorry I didn't record all the fiddling around and stuff, but it was literally just the coil. The, whole time I replaced and 